Hey everybody, this is Pam Coe and I have Rob Smales with me. He's in Hamburg, Germany. He's a wonderful artist and since I've known him, I mean his paintings, his career, everything is just like going to the moon here. <laughs> and anyways, I, uh -huh. I wanted to, <laughs> he's also very humble. So I wanted to share with you his ideas on self-talk because we artists can be so hard on ourselves and he's doing a lot of things just to help himself with mindset. So here's Rob. <laughs> Hi Pam. Uh, thanks for that introduction. That's really kind. It's nice to hear all those things. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess the self-talk is um, saying all, all those nice things to yourself in your head, right? Right. So um, for quite a while now, part of my, I guess I would call it my practice, my daily art practice, I almost see, um, I, I, I love reading self-help books and, you know, looking at things online and listening to podcasts and stuff. And I almost see it as kind of half the work, working mm -hmm. on my head and my headspace, my mind, mindset. Wow. And um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not an expert by any means, but even that phrase I've just said there, how you talk to yourself is so important. Like I'm not an expert. And so I'm kind of like making myself smaller, the moment I say that yeah and like interesting things that I found out are for example like your brain can't really differentiate between you know what your opinion of yourself and sort of a fact so the, the mere fact of me saying I'm not an expert kind of reinforces in my head that I'm not an expert so you know if I spend my whole life saying that I'm never going to be an expert I see so it's almost like you, you need to start tricking your brain by saying Hi Pam, I'm I'm now an expert on this topic, you know. Yes, yes. And, oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, you might, and it, if you just apply that to everything, basically, you know, um, just the way you talk to yourself all the time, and it's 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 really powerful, I think, actually. Um, so also things that you kind of um, I've spent my whole life saying things like I'm chaotic. I'm quite chaotic, um, which might be factually speaking correct to a certain extent but just the way you sort of tell yourself you're chaotic you kind of leave yourself no no um room to sort of grow and you know it's got like a self-fulfilling prophecy what would be the opposite um, then like instead of saying i'm chaotic what would you say to yourself like i'm organized or what would you say either that i think or i mean maybe people listening um know a lot more about this than me at times with like um, manifestation and manifesting your whole future basically but you'd say um i'm a lot less chaotic than i was five years ago or, or i'm working on that thing where i think i'm you know can never find anything um and even I mean, a lot of things like d doing sort of positive affirmations, they have sometimes a bit of a bad rap because a lot of people think, what's the point in saying them if you don't really believe them? Mm -hmm. But I think if you do say them often enough and if you just get in the habit of saying nice things to yourself in your head, um, I think every little bit is sort of pu pushing you in the right direction. I love that. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Cool. I do think positive yeah. mindset yeah we artists can be so tough on ourselves especially when things aren't going well and we're looking at our painting and and it's just like sad <laughs> and we're like so defeatist like i'm not an artist uh, i'm gonna quit i'm gonna throw this away i'm gonna start over um and and i i also agree that sometimes it's just the, the smallest little tweak you know in our thought process yeah. it's like hey it's ugly but i know how to fix it or it's ugly, but it should be because I've just played and it should be ugly. Uh, I find that I, 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 you know, because I also beat myself up, like, I don't know of any artist who really doesn't. I think that's what we're so good at. And we just have to realize that the creative process is so full of times when our paintings and the whole idea of being an artist challenge us. And it's almost like it's our left brain brain saying I dare you you know if you if you really want yeah. to be an artist uh yeah so um, yeah absolutely yeah. do uh, you have any like favorite think, uh sorry do you have any favorite books or podcasts that you watch or read to help you with mindset and self-talk um yeah there's so many of them um 
one um, that I would really recommend off the bat, and I'm sure many people know about it because she's a kind of best-selling author. I'm sure you've heard of Mel Robbins as well. Okay, she's yeah. very much into this topic, and she's I think she's even written a book as well about the the kind of high five. Um, do you know about this? I don't um, think so. No. So, I mean, just Google Mel Robbins and the high five and you'll and sh you could be able to listen to her talk very eloquently about it. But it's basically and I've started doing it as well, even though it sounds ridiculous. When you're in the bathroom in the morning, you give yourself in the mirror a high five. Yeah. And there's a lot of science to back up the fact that, first of all, looking at yourself in the eyes and the, you know, if, if anyone gives you, Pam, a high five, it's a, it's a good thing, right? It's like one of the best things someone can do. They're like, wow, you're like giving yourself a big, big uh, pick up, pick me up. Right. And just there's, there's scientific studies to pr that prove that if you do this over a period of time every day, you just high five yourself. Yeah. Your whole kind of like what you can achieve in a day and how you like perceive yourself and all the things that are possible kind of are really elevated. So it's like a tiny sort of split second thing you can do. It's it's um so I'd recommend reading that book. And it's all it's all those kind of things. Awesome. It sounds That's... it sounds crazy, but it's uh, not, not really. Yeah, I mean I think it's like, um Yeah. I've known people who've had like what is it, vision boards where it's like you you project yourself where you want to be, say in five years, and maybe you've got pictures of the Caribbean and you've got a luxury yeah. car, whatever it is you want in life, you you gather images and, and it's your like your vision board and you focus on those things. And supposedly that sinks into your uh, psyche and helps you to attain whatever it is you want to attain. And, and you know, the things I mentioned might might be based on, you know, wealth, but for artists, it might be that, hey, no, I, I just want to be able to finish my work. And so you show paintings that you admire and artists work that you admire and perhaps you know and every artist has a story so uh and and most stories yeah. of the masters have so much uh pain and suffering you know so I, I just think that you're right if we can uh somehow do that little bit of a change in how we talk to ourselves so that's very exciting have you seen manifestations of this happen for you then like as you're doing your high five as you're reading these books like what 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 have you noticed in your own practice um so I think definitely the principle of like little and often applies so you have to put in the work obviously you can't sort of say um I'd like to have a body of work in six months or whatever and not do anything and it's sort of appear um but like you were just saying, like the the anyone's art making, first of all, you're on your own a lot, generally speaking. So you don't have sort of other people maybe giving you positive feedback or lifting you up or reassuring you. So that little voice in your head that's um I feel like at the moment I'm doing quite a lot of work in terms of quantity, but I feel a little bit directionless, for example. Like what's where's all this leading me? And it's always that like little little sort of faith you have and you have to have in your head like it's it's going to take me to where I want to go um so I definitely feel like it's a daily practice a daily um thing of practicing um that kindness and not necessarily sort of telling yourself you're absolutely wonderful but just not uh, not beating yourself up basically so um, congratulating it's, yourself. It's, it's, um, yeah, um, but also just telling yourself like, whatever happens in this painting, however it turns out, it's how it was supposed to turn out. Or Perfect. or just being very, very conscious about things that you catch yourself saying. For example, just a minute ago, again, I told you about the high five concept, but then I said, it sounds a bit crazy. And okay. things like that, I sort of said, oh, I shouldn't have really have said that because that's telling my brain don't bother with that that's you know so yeah. just the I just think the the um the mere act of saying something speaking it with your lips or even telling yourself in your head has a much much bigger impact than we probably realize that's so, that's the thing I'm into at the moment <laughs> yeah well and and I'd also like to just briefly touch on 
you know, you had a wonderful show in the fall. And when you finish a show, you know, all kinds of thoughts go through your head. There's a lot of joy, but then there's also a lot of like a little bit of a down period because you're like, wow, that was such an effort. I'm glad it's over. But now you face like, say the next body of work. And it sounds like that may be where you are right now. And can you talk a little bit about the importance of not just the like the the positive self-talk and mindset, but like what you were just saying, you you show up. Number one, you got to show up. Number yeah. two, there's a lot of hard work. And then number three, in terms of the mindset, you got to just be like, hey, whatever happens, happens. So are you like you don't know the direction yet? It's like you just launched off into a ship. You don't have a map. You're just having faith in the process. Is that how you're feeling right now? Like you don't really worry about the theme or cohesion. You're just like launching off onto a new journey. And is that kind of what you're thinking? Exactly that. Yeah. I mean, on, on, in quite an extreme way, um, even sort of different techniques and um, trying to basically um, follow so much of like what's central to your teaching is, you know, use your, in, like tune into your intuition. And if you come across something that you really enjoy doing or, oh, I love that color or um, I love that mark or just seeing where that takes you. But that does involve quite um quite a good headspace where, you know, if you didn't, if you weren't telling yourself the right things and if you weren't equipped with the right knowledge that that does take you to good places, um, you would almost immediately give up probably, you know, the person on the street, um, if they, you know, had started playing with mark making, they'd just say, oh, that's, you know, that's embarrassing or, you know, so it's, it's not, you know, do you know what I mean? So it's. Having the faith that it's going to lead to something valuable. Yeah, I think because we artists work so hard and finding who we are deep down, especially for those of us who are non-objective, you know, artists where we really don't have anything to look at to inform our work, we kind of, there's a, a lot of room for trust in ourselves to recognize something that we love versus something we don't love, something that we like versus something that we're like, "Mm, not quite sure. There's, there's a lot of gray area, but like looking at that work behind you, one thing I've noticed is a very continuous thread, regardless of what you're doing. Like I know Rob loves the grid. It doesn't mean there will always be a grid, but what it does mean to me is that, wow, I've seen it recur again and again. This is a continuous thread in his work that may make it to the end of the painting or it may not but i feel like that is a wonderful place for you to start your exploration is that true um absolutely yeah yeah um it's i'm not i wouldn't say as well that i'd uh, necessarily oh i'm going to be doing this forever but it's a fun way for me to start i found i like putting the colors next to one another and then i i've started more and more thinking of paintings as being 40 layers, 50 layers, 60 layers, all on top of right. one another, which right. of course is um, ref- is a little slightly reflective of your approach too. But the, the great thing about that is um, just how freeing it is, right? So right. mistakes are almost, well, just don't really exist. Um, you can, right. um, and you can almost get sort of, sometimes when I take a photograph and then, um, I look back, I think well, I've, I've kind of made 10 works out of one one canvas or whatever. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, which, brings me, ones which um, brings me to another question. So, you talk about, you know, the potential of 40 layers, but at the same time, if in an early layer, let's say you're just in the play stage, and you're like, wow, I, I love that. Would you stop? Would you say, gosh, you know, this this is kind of like capturing something I really love, for this mm. painting, I'm just going to let this one live and move on to the next one. Do you ever have that kind of freedom or? Um, definitely to leave it for a period of time. Uh, um, again, that whole topic of when to stop is is such an in, in, intuition thing, right? It that, is. It's such a feeling. Um, it's interesting you asked that question because I've I've started these two works at the moment. I'm not sure if you can see, but this one is um, I've sand. I've it's a board, and I've um, 
bought myself a week ago a uh, sander finally which I was really oh, interested in good. and a mask kind of thing. so um I've I've been experimenting with sort of um sanding off layers again whereas if I just turn you around I have um this one okay which is um I've just done um a grid and then I painted it over again with different colors over the same yeah so that's got about three or four layers of it of paint again yeah. which I was going to start sanding too yes but there's something about there's something about the just the seeming lack of layers that I kind of quite like as well I mean right. it's very simple but um, so in that sense I I might if I like the look of it as it is leave, leave it for a month or two but I think something inside me would always want some more complexity, I think, of yeah. layers. I, I love that. Um, you know, when we when we fall in love with, let's say, a stage, a stage within those 40 layers, and we're like, you know, that I want to enjoy that for a while. I want to live with that for a month or a year until I'm no longer happy with it. Um, one thing I really believe in is uh, the value of time and just letting, you know, you walk past it on a daily or weekly or monthly basis and you walk past it and you're like, do I still love it like I did yesterday? And then it starts to nudge at you. It starts to talk to you like, you know, it. I was good yesterday, but today I want a little more. <laughs> it's like the painting's telling you, yeah. right? Do you feel like there's a conversation between you and your work? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's kind of, um, and I think that ties back in with, um, what I was saying about self-talk and mindset work, I feel like we're conspiring together. So it's it's absolutely not conspiring against me. Yeah. Like when we get together, something's gonna happen and it's gonna make something happen. Yeah. Rather than um and I think all artists must feel that a bit that that work on a on a regular basis. Um, otherwise it would just be complete torture because it's there's so much uncertainty involved anyway. So you have to have that kind of overarching belief that something good is going to come at the end of the struggle, right? <laughs> something just occurred to me too, you know, we we as artists can, you know, we're isolated. Most of us have a studio where we don't have, we're not, you know, sometimes some of us share studio space, but if you're alone, you feel alone. But then all of a sudden, what you're just saying is that, no, we can imagine, we can kind of in mindset say, you're not alone. You actually have a partner and your partner is your painting. You have a, so it's oh. a win. It's a partnership. Um, it's like your, your partners in this effort to, uh, to seek out what's in your soul and what you love. And the painting is there to help guide us that little conversation, yeah. which we do need to give it time to mature and evolve. And as we grow as artists, that conversation changes and morphs into whatever, but in, in that process, and it is all about process, uh, we grow and learn from each painting. Um, it's not about perfection. It's about, did I hit an emotional note uh, that I've, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, uh, so. I think I think that's the great thing about working in a series as well. Like, I'm sure you'll know this too. Like sometimes you do work on something and you feel like it's not really speaking to me or it's not really sort of connecting. And to be able to then put it to the side and, um, I think especially when when we're on our own, you know, we're still all, always thinking all the time. I mean, of course, you switch off a bit when in the when you're painting, but um, it's a constant like stream of consciousness as you're in your studio. And if you're not talking to anyone all day, you kind of can catch yourself focusing maybe on something that's counterproductive, or you know, you're getting frustrated. And we can always like um decide what we want to focus on so if we are if i am working on this and it's i feel a bit sort of flat then if you've got eight other things that might spark you a bit more spark your interest or excitement maybe just leave that one even if you did wanted to start on it um so trying to i guess rather than going down a rabbit hole of sort of negativity if you sense that happening change tack and go to the other side of the room and work yeah. on something else maybe 
Yeah, I love that. That um, that's I, I totally agree with you. Uh having multiple works going on at one time means there's less chance you're gonna beat yourself up and quit, you know, because this piece is yeah literally ready for a time out and sometimes I'll turn it away and make it face the wall. Like you are not, you, you know, it's not working anymore. So I'll turn it around. And then a few days later, after you've worked on a no number of other paintings, you come back to that problem child and it's like, Oh, well now I know what to do. Right. And yeah. Yeah. And it's not letting that problem child get you down completely and yeah. sort of, you know, oh, not want to go into a studio because it's sort of there in the corner looking at you. Yeah. Um, well, Rob, thank you so much for this time. Um, it's it's so valuable talking to you. I, I, you know, there you are all the way in Germany and <clears throat> it's so nice to be able to connect with artists and have these, these really kind of impromptu discussions and a lot of good stuff comes out with it. So, Hey, you guys, if, if you're out there and listening, uh, please add to the conversation here and let Rob know, you know, what you think about his paintings and, you know, look him up. He's on Instagram. Uh, what is your Instagram handle, by the way? Rob.smails.art. You definitely guys want to follow him on Instagram and you could um, share some self-help tips as well as self-help books and particularly ones um, really Relating to making art and yeah yeah if anyone wants to talk about that high five trick yeah. um it it definitely doesn't do any harm so <laughs> yeah and let me just say that uh the purpose of this channel is is definitely to share what we as artists go through and it's real like this is real stuff you know we're not making up stuff so if there's any topic you would like rob and i to discuss openly uh honestly uh, please just comment below and uh, let us know because uh, we love to chat and uh, we both are, you know, professional artists who are trying to figure it out just like you guys are. We, uh, our whole intention here is to allow our art to help tell us who we are. And it, it's a high endeavor. I mean, I don't think there's any higher endeavor than trying to figure out more about yourself through something that's visual like this. It's very, very hard to do. So if you've got a topic, please comment below and uh, we'll, we'll go through those and choose one for the next video together. Okay. So thank you so much, Rob, for your time and good luck with your lovely paintings and where you're going next. And uh, look yeah, forward to talking too. with you again. Thanks, Rob. All the best, Pam. Okay. Bye. Bye.